And now, Faux Fiction Audio brings you another case from the spiral bound and sticky note files of Mickey McKinney, Boy Detective. Mickey McKinney, that mini mystery man, solves the cases that plague the halls of Maple Ridge Middle School with his trusty partner and friend, Sam Hayes. No pet or project too lost, no cafeteria food too mysterious, no case too small when Mickey McKinney is on the job. Give it up, Jasmine. You know that hamster doesn't belong to you. Never. You'll never catch me. <sighs> she's headed toward the history room. Oh, wait, now she's making a left at the science lab. Sam, do you read me? S- Sam? She's almost got to the doors. Sam, she's getting away. Hey, Jasmine, what's up? Out of my way! Not so fast, hamster stealer. Give me that cage. About time you got here. What? Why didn't you use your walkie? I was too busy sprinting. Let go of the cage, he's mine! Stop yanking, the cage door looks loose! He could get out! I said let go! He's airborne! Mickey, catch him! Uh, I got it, got it! Uh, Ow! Ah, my face! Well, that's one way to catch a hamster. Ow! Ah, Sam, help, get it off me! Ah, Wow, 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 wow! All I'm saying is that it might be good to let me teach you a few moves. That way you wouldn't be so... you when it comes to catching suspects. Well, I thought I caught him fine. I nabbed Jasmine and wrestled her to the ground. You caught the hamster because it happened to land on your face. Eh, Well, it worked, didn't it? And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or you'll be the broken one, one of these days. Hey, have a little faith. I can be macho when... Ah! So I see. Hey, Burners, don't see you standing there. Wow, you're dressed nice. What's the occasion? Marple. Excuse me? My name's Marple. Uh, since when? Um, since forever. Oh, you think I'm Jamara, right? No, no, I'm her twin sister, Marple. Well, actually, it's Margaret Maple Burns, but pretty much everyone just calls me Marple. Pinch me. My worst nightmare just came true. There's actually two of them. Ow! Sorry, you told me to. <laughs> You know, when you take away the lab coat and the goggles... Brush the hair, add some nice clothes... They could be identical. Weird. Weird. Are you two done talking about me as if I'm not here? Wait, what if this is a clone? Yeah, I'd buy that. Hey kid, let's see if you have a belly button. I'm not a kid or a clone! (laughs) Right, uh, sorry. You you just look a lot like her. In a less crazy looking way. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. So, to business. I'm- Mickey McKinney, boy detective. And she's Sam Hayes. (gasps) Uh, Jamie sometimes talks about you at home. She does? Sure. Well, maybe talk is the wrong word. More like rants or screams. Though you are a lot cuter in person. Uh, thank you. Um, so how can we help you today? By staying exactly the way you are. (laughs) I think I'm gonna like this kid. If we could focus. Oh, fine. Do you have a case for us? A missing pet, lost science project, something equally as boring? I want you to find out who kidnapped my best friend, Mr. Barrington. And you say we never get interesting cases. Marple, I appreciate your faith in us, but if someone is kidnapped, we might not be the best qualified for this job. (laughs) Perhaps you could start with the basics. Can you describe Mr. Barrington? Mickey. He's about a foot and a half, with brown eyes, a big smile, brown fur, and the last time I saw him, he was wearing a pink ribbon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. Mr. Barrington is a teddy bear? Oh, he's not just any bear. He's my best friend in the whole world. He gives hugs, reads stories, sings songs. Any chance he had the ability to run away on his own? <laughs> no. That would be silly. He does, however, have a built-in hot water bottle and radio. A talking teddy bear with a built-in water bottle and radio. You you getting this down? What am I, the secretary? No, I just thought we should start. I mean, it might be important. Eh, Never mind, I'll do it. So, last time you saw him was two days ago. Anything else? You have beautiful eyes. (coughs) Uh, Great, thanks. 
My birthday party is on Saturday. You should totally come and hang out. Make sure you get that down, Mick. It might be important. You are not helping. Who said I was? Sam. Ah, oh, fine. Marple, before my partner's head explodes, I should point out that since you are roughly the same size as Burners, I am fairly confident I can drop kick you out the door if we feel you are wasting our time. Spoil sport. Excellent. So, now that we're more or less back on track, do you have any suspects that we can interview? I've got one. The only person who could have stolen Mr. Barrington. My sister, Jamara P. Burns. <laughs> this day just keeps getting better and better. What does the P stand for? <laughs> Knock, knock. Am I allowed in? Is Sam there? Babysitter at your service. Hey. Fine, come in. I just need two minutes to tweak this. Oh, you brought her. What are you doing here, Marple? Isn't it nap time back at elementary school? No, it's not. And I'm here to get Mr. Barrington back. Your teddy bear? Aren't you a little too old for him? Oh, you always treat me like I'm a baby. When will you remember that we're the same age, Miss Genius Smarty Pants? When you start acting your age! Well, I might act like a child, but at least I don't look like something exploded in my face. And in my defense, Mickey was here an hour ago. Something did explode in my face. I just haven't had time to clean up! Give Mr. Barry Ted back! He's not here, stupid! The name's McKinney. Josh Billings says there are two things in life for which we are never truly prepared. Twins. It was at times like this that I was grateful I was an only child, as the presence of siblings seemed to be a vexation that most people complained about. And yet, I had to wonder, what must it be like to have someone so close to you and yet be so different in every way? If your IQ was any lower, you'd be a single-celled organism! Oh yeah? Well, you have a butt face! Oh, we're identical! That means you have a butt face too! Both of you, calm down! She started it! it! Right, I got this. No! Ah! Oh, come on! How'd you know that would work? Yeah, it always works on my brothers. You have brothers? Mickey, focus. Okay, you two. Burners, Marble thinks you stole her teddy bear. Did you? Sam, I promise I didn't steal her bear. I've, uh, I've been working on a project all day. Great. Well, that's one suspect crossed off our list. Marple, is there anyone else who... No, there is no one else who would take him. And I'm telling you, I didn't steal your stupid bear. Don't you dare call him stupid. He is my best friend. Okay, okay. How about this? Marple, what if Mickey and I come to your house after school and look around? Maybe he just got misplaced. Hold up. You... And Mickey, at my house? Yes, is that going to be a problem? <gasps> oh no, that sounds like a great idea. Oh, help. The name's McKinney. Isadora James says that a sister is a gift to the heart, a friend to the spirit, and a golden thread to the meaning of life. Obviously, when she said that, she had never met Burners and Marple, as that quote would probably have been revised to state that sisters get along as well as oil and water, or positive and negative charges, or, I don't know, a snake and a mongoose. Thankfully, the Trouble Twins were the only clients we acquired today, so I was able to make it to history class on time with the lollipop Marple paid with as an advance. I tried not to dwell too much on the fact that it was pink and heart-shaped. After all, candy was candy, wasn't it? Good afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Mr. Kim, and I will be substituting for Miss Caverly this week. So, uh, according to the lesson plan she left me, we're covering ancient Roman mythology. Who wants to tell me what they remember from their reading last night? Anyone? Okay, guys, this is the part of the class where you're actually encouraged to talk and participate. Nobody? Okay, I didn't want to do this, but I guess we're learning the hard way. You, sleepyhead, tell me about the founders of Rome. Five, four, three, two, one. Ow! All right, who's next? Come on, answer right, and I won't throw a pen at you. You, blue glasses, 
Same question. Five, four, three, two. Uh, uh is one of them rhombus? Uh, <coughs> Ow! Seriously? Did all of you leave your brains at home? You, Humphrey Bogart, founders of Rome. Five, four. Uh, Romulus and Remus. Good. Hmm. Hmm. Romulus and Remus. According to legend, they were the twin founders of Rome. What do we know about them? <sighs> Bogart, take it away. Romulus and Remus were the sons of the Princess Rhea and the god Mars. When they were infants, Rhea's uncle, Omulus, took over the throne and to avoid male competition, ordered Romulus and Remus be left to die in the wilderness. Bit of a Kronos complex, don't you think? Take a breath. Who's next? Don't make me break out the pens again. Uh, weren't the twins found by a wolf and she raised them? Oh, I don't know. Were they? It could have been a tiger. Arr. No, sir, she's right. It was a wolf. Ah, but you knew that it was right and she wasn't sure, Bogart. That's the difference. Well, at least she tried, sir. Alright, everyone. Listen up, because I'm only going to say this once. First of all, I'm guessing some of you don't like me right now. That's okay. I didn't come here to be liked. I came to teach. So the second thing that's going to happen is that this uh, blank eye zombie stare thing going around stops today. Because I'm not going to spoon feed you everything. Go home, read the material, and come back tomorrow ready to discuss. Just because Miss Caverly isn't here doesn't mean you get a pass to slack off. I certainly won't be, so neither should you. Now. Since it's clear most of you just skimmed your books, let's open to chapter five and we'll start from the top. You, pink shirt, read the first paragraph. You think Mr. Kim also subs for Major League Pitchers? He really nailed Tommy for that last paragraph he read. What are you complaining about? You were the only one who knew all the answers. So, you think this is the place? It matches the address. Ring the doorbell already. Welcome to Casa de Burns. Casa? This is more like Mansion de Burns. Yeah, what gives burners? You never said you were rich. You never asked. Our great granddad founded the first Maple Ridge Maple Factory in the 1930s. Dad became the CEO of the company about well, five years ago. Wait, your granddad is THE Sylvester Burns? As in, creator of the raspberry blueberry maple syrup? And the peach and caramel delight? And- Yeah, yeah, we get it, McCavity. He made syrup for a living. So stop drooling on the marble floor. Don't we have a job to do? This way, we can take the elevator to the third floor. You have an elevator? In your house? Only two. We're thinking of adding a third to make it easier to reach the bowling alley. Burners, you have the coolest place ever. How come we've never been invited over? Trust me. If I could have had it my way, you never would have been through the front gate. Watch the Ming vase, McClumsy, and stay out of the kitchen. This is so cool. What else do you have? Oh, Miss Burns and Miss Burns. Ah, uh, 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 Smith. We talked about this Burns Square. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, madam. Your mother just called. She'll be delayed in Paris for a few more hours. Should I have your dinner sent up to your rooms, or would you prefer to eat in the dining room? Uh, send mine to the lab, Smith. I'm working on a few projects. Very good, Miss Burns. Send mine to the game room, Smith. And make it a pizza. We're having guests for dinner. Anything else you want for dinner, Mickey? Uh, nobody pinch me. This is a dream. I don't want to wake up. Oh, brother. <laughs> Okay, Mick, you've tried out every video game, the bounce house, the bowling alley, the indoor pool, eaten five slices of pizza. We should really get to work now. Oh, come on, this is the coolest place ever. Yes, level five. Actually, it's kind of depressing. What do you mean? This house has games, pools, hundreds of rooms. I'm pretty sure I saw a petting zoo somewhere. And none of it looks used. Look around. Aside from the staff, Burners and Marple are the only people in here, and they're not even getting along. Seems a little lonely. Okay, now that you mention it, that is a little depressing. No wonder Marple asked us over. I'm pretty sure that wasn't her reason. It, what do you mean? Hey, Mickey, look what I brought! Chocolate cake! And I lost him. 
<clears throat> Actually, Marple, Mickey and I were thinking about doing some investigating before dessert. Isn't that right, Mickey? Huh? Oh, well, right, right. <clears throat> Maybe we should split up and look for clues. That way we'll cover more ground. Oh, okay. I'll go with you. Uh, um, actually, you should, uh, just definitely go with Sam. She, she's getting, gets lost easily. Uh, right, Sam? Right. I forgot my compass at home and couldn't possibly find my way back here on my own. Great. So, I'll see you back here in an hour. Uh, bye. I wonder what's in this room. Hey! Haven't you ever heard of knocking? Good morning, Princess. How would you like to start your day? Burners? So Marple was right. You did steal Mr. Barrington. Uh, uh, no. I didn't. This is, uh, my teddy bear. Mr. Barrington will always be your best friend, no matter what. I should have installed a mute button on you. I like hugs and sunshine. Uh, um, I can explain. Why don't you explain to Marple instead? No, no! No, wait, Mickey. Don't tell her! Get out of my way, Burners. Look, I, I know you think I don't care about my sister, that I'm just wrapped up in all my work all the time. Well, I haven't seen anything to prove otherwise. Hey! I invented that bear for her. So she would have someone there when I couldn't be. So why steal him? For crying out loud, Burners, she misses that bear. She needs... Because it's her birthday on Saturday! Our birthday. I always borrow him to run an annual diagnostic on Mr. Barrington. You know, just general repairs, minor tweakings, and I can usually get it done without her noticing. But this year... I wanted to give him an upgrade, add some new tech, maybe download some of her favorite stories on his internal hard drive. I, I didn't take into consideration how much time it would take. I just... I just wanted to make this birthday special for her, you know? Look, Marple is the client. She deserves to know what happened to Mr. Barrington. I know! I'm sorry! I should have told her! Do you... Do you think... You, you could postpone telling her? Just until Saturday, please. Well, he's definitely not in the ballroom or the library. How many rooms are there left? Who cares? This was a waste of time. Only with that attitude it is. Come on, let's take a break. What do you and, uh, Burr... Jamie, do around here for fun. <laughs> fun? Jamie and I never have fun. She's always on a plane to some place, or a lecture, or working in her lab. But what about when you were younger? Mom and Dad found out Jamie was a genius when we were six, and since then she's just been busy. Hey, there you are. Where have you been? Oh, you know, uh, around. Okay, so, seen any signs of a certain stuffed toy? Yeah, me? No, no, not a, I haven't seen a thing. Actually, I was thinking, <laughs> it's getting late. Maybe, maybe we should go home and try again with fresh eyes. It's only seven. How about we check down this hallway first? I think I hear burners tinkering. Yes! No, no, we definitely shouldn't check down there because it's, uh, uh I already looked. And there's nothing there, so we, we would just be wasting our time. Hey, hey, maybe we should go down this hallway. Uh, are those cookies I smell? Hey, let's check it out. <laughs> You look like you have something on your mind. Huh? Uh, oh, hi. Yeah, I guess I do. Do you mind if I sit down? Uh, be my guest. You're not sitting with your theater club today? Well, it's audition week, so everyone is a tad edgy. Besides, you look like you need someone to talk to. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Do you think it's wrong if... if a friend asks you to keep a secret from someone else? Hmm. I guess it depends on the secret. Say, hypothetically, you're asked to pretend you don't know something. Like there's a missing hat. And you know where it is, but you have to keep it a secret until the hat is fixed. Is it wrong that you're not telling the person where their hat is? Well, it sounds like in this 
hypothetical situation, good intentions are behind the missing hat. <laughs> but ultimately, it's it's up to- I got it! I finally have proof! Ah! Hey, Marple. How did you get in here? Oh, I just told my driver I needed to drop something off at the middle school. Of course, I didn't mention I was dropping it off with you. Well, it's reassuring to know that just anyone can get in here. <laughs> yeah, great, huh? Oh, who's your friend? Uh, no, she she's not my friend. I mean, she is, uh... We're just classmates, having lunch together. Right, what he said. We're just classmates. Oh, that's nice. So, Mickey, take a look at this. It looks like a piece of hair. Yes, it is! I found it in my room near Mr. Barrington's chair, where he was sitting before he disappeared. And this can't be one of your hairs? Um, no. Look at the follicle tip. Split ends. I take way better care of my hair than that. But do you know who has the exact same shade of hair but doesn't condition it? Uh, burners? Exactly! Come on, we have proof now! Let's go interrogate her! Sorry, Mickey, I just got your text. <laughs> Come on, Munchkin, let's get you to your school. What? Hey! Put me down! You can't do this to me! Stop squirming or I'll drop you. I demand justice! Do you hear me? Justice! Well, I think I'm going to go eat lunch elsewhere. What? But I thought you wanted to sit with me. Yeah, but I think I'd rather sit with my friends than... Just one of my classmates. See you around, Mickey. Wait, Kai. Mm, mm, well, hopefully that's the last time I stuff a nine-year-old into a limo. So, how long do we have to pretend we don't know Burners has Mr. Barrington? Uh, Saturday. Wait, what? How do you know about that? Well, for starters, you and Burners are horrible liars. And also, I'm not an idiot. And I don't think Marple is either. If she didn't suspect something was going on before, she certainly does now. By the way, what happened there with Kai? Nothing. I'm an idiot. Well, what else is new? You gonna eat those chips? Romulus and Remus. Two brothers. Twins. Who, according to our reading, managed to survive being left in the wilderness outsmart their great uncle's soldiers, and have the ambition to create a new city that would one day be one of the most prominent empires in history. However, they had one weakness. What was it? They couldn't decide on where to build their city. Technically, yes, uh, but I want you to go deeper than that. Uh, their weakness was each other. Yes, exactly! Together, Romulus and Remus were able to survive impossible odds, but all it took was a single dispute, and Romulus, in anger, lashes out and kills his brother. A single dispute. Their dream city, where to build it, became more important than each other, and in that moment, they were divided. Do you think if they had gotten along, things would be different? <laughs> the story of Romulus and Remus is just a myth, Mr. McKinney, but yes, I like to think that there's a certain symbolism behind the tale. That in killing Remus, certain values of Rome were killed as well. Maybe it wouldn't have changed a thing if they had built Rome together. Maybe it would have changed everything. But we'll never know for sure, will we? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, may I please be excused? Uh, me too? Yeah. Yep, just there, there they go. Is this a regular thing? Okay, Mick. Why are we ditching class? Uh, I just feel better if we check something. Uh, Burners? Hello? Are you in here? She could be in class. I'm not entirely sure she doesn't have a cot somewhere so she could sleep here. Mickey, over here. It's a ransom note. Bring Mr. Barrington to this mansion. Oh, to the mansion. Or you'll never see Jamie again. So she figured out we knew where her bear was and opted for a force to get him back. Is it me or is this just getting a little ridiculous? Actually, Mickey, I'm not sure this is about a bear at all. <laughs> Oh, Mr. McKinney, Miss Hayes, you have returned? Indeed, a smith old boy. Could you tell me where Marple and Burn, uh, Jamie are? Miss Burns and Miss Burns are currently upstairs in the laboratory. They have asked not to be disturbed. You want to explain to me what you figured out? 
Just follow my lead. Uh, Mr. McKinney and Miss Hayes. We know, we know, and they ask not to be disturbed. Do me a favor and pretend you managed to slip by while you were busy looking shocked. Oh look, we just did. About time you got here! We've been waiting for hours. Sorry, it, it took us a little while to figure out you'd take the crazy route to get your bear back. Not one step closer, Mickey. You might be cute, but I'll still blast you with this stink spray! If I distract her, can you get that super silker away from Marple? Not this time. Because it isn't about Mr. Barrington, is it, Marple? Your best friend isn't a stuffed bear, it's the person who made him for you. Seriously? That's your theory? Don't you think she could just- Burners was discovered to be a genius when they were six, Mick. And the only way Marple knows how to get her sister's attention is to start a fight. But you don't need to do that anymore. You're stronger together, just like Romulus and Remus. Um, what is she talking about? Don't look at me, I'm just as clueless. It's a bit of an extended metaphor. We just got out of history class. See, there was a chance you would catch on to Mickey's dirty little secret, and he figured if you were half as crazy as your sister, you might try something drastic to get him back. I resent that! Then, Mick had the bright idea to ask if this was a little overboard for a stuffed bear, which got me thinking that this whole case was an elaborate charade in order to get Burners away from her work. It's not true! I just want my bear! Fine. Burners, where's Mr. Barrington? Uh, top shelf, behind the microscope. Here you go, Marple. Mr. Barrington, safe and sound. Now, if this is all that you want, the case is closed, and you don't have to talk to Burners ever. <laughs> okay. You're right. I don't care about this stupid bear. I just, I just want to see you to come to my party, but, but she's always just so, she's always so... Busy! Oh, jeez! Guys, what do I do? Hug her. Tell her it's going to be okay. God. Hey! Oh, shh, shh. Hey, it's okay, Marple. Uh, you, you, you know what? Maybe I can put some projects on hold uh, just for a few hours on Saturday. Really? You'll, you'll come to the party? Uh, sure! And hey, I'm unveiling a new prototype at MIT next week. It'll, it'll probably be boring for you, but you can come on the private plane with me. <laughs> I'm sorry I kidnapped you. You're the best sister in the whole wide world. Oh, that's, that's so sweet. You little, 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 little. Oh, Well, I think our work here is done. Is it me, or did we do even less work than usual? Maybe you did, Precious, but I'm pretty sure I just saved the day. Hey, I figured out Marple would take burners. And I figured out why. Though, seriously, Marple, wasn't the fake crush on Mickey a little over the top in your grand scheme? Who says it was fake? I can multitask. The name's McKinney. Christopher Paulini says, Those whom we love are often the most alien to us. And in the case of burners and Marple, I'd have to say that statement was true. We couldn't go back in time to give the Burns twins happier memories to fill the empty rooms of their mansions, or help them get along on a regular basis. But today, for a little while at least, we helped bridge a gap that had been there for the last three years of their life. And maybe, with a little luck, things would stay that way for good. Get away! I just want cake! Come back here, cutie! Sam! 
little help, please? Sam! So I'm not waiting. A personal message in this week's episode to the real Mr. Kim Melby. Yes, I know you didn't actually throw pens at me, but I hope you will allow me a few creative liberties for the sake of comedy. Thank you for being supportive of my writing and always encouraging me to think outside the box. And to Mr. Gordon Bryson, who is also an inspiration for this character. You scared the heck out of me on more than one occasion, but somehow you're still one of my favorite teachers. Go figure. Episode 6, Nikki McKinney, Double the Devil, was written and directed by Ruby Fink, with music by Leon Biscara and Alex Hobbs. The faux family cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney, Mr. Barrington, and Smith. Violet Fink as Sam Hayes. Leon Labra as Burners. Anna Edelson as Kailani Groom and Marple Burns. CJ Longhammer as Tommy Tubbins. Andrea Estrada as Jasmine. Brandon Seaslack as Mr. Kim. And me, Zach Johnson, as your announcer. This recording, characters, and the situations within are the property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. So until the next case, Faux Fiction Audio says goodbye. Thank you.